Hello and welcome to my brief introduction to the world's first home video games console, the Magnavox Odyssey. In 1966, Ralph Baer, an engineer working in US military research, began conceptualizing a device for what he called television games. In two years, Baer had a working prototype called the Brown Box. After several failed attempts to license his product in 1971, Magnavox, a US TV, TV manufacturer, took an interest in Bayer's creation. They licensed the technology and set to work to make it ready for public sale. Within nine months, they would unveil the Magnavox Odyssey. The console was very similar to the original design, by the removal of its ability to create color background graphics. This enabled the machine to be sold at a much more friendly price. These are the backgrounds were now created using plastic screen overlays. The console had no CPU and was an analog digital hybrid device. One major change made from the brown box was that now games were not built in but were instead created using removable circuit boards. This allowed for further games to be bought later on, creating further revenues for, Mag for Magnavox. The graphics were extremely basic, consisting of only three moving objects, i.e. two players, and a ball, and a center line, in black and white. The console also had no sound capabilities whatsoever. Here we have the innards of the Odyssey 1972, compared with the Sony PS3 2011. The Odyssey was a much, much simpler machine. The Odyssey had no means to keep score. So scorecards, dice, money, playing cards and more were supplied with the console. The console came with 6 cartridges allowing 12 games to be played. In essence these were all the same with just a different screen overlay used and a different set of rules. The only graphical change between games was that the centre line would be moved further left or right to accommodate the new rules for the new games. Magnavox Odyssey sold for 100 US dollars in 1972, which is roughly equivalent to 530 dollars or 405 euros in 2012. These are some of the plastic screen overlays and accessories that came with the console. The Odyssey shipped with two very simple controllers. There are a small box with two knobs, one for up down movement and the other for left right. There is also a Lycon accessory available for the Odyssey with four different games. This is also the first of its kind, but this also meant that it had a few issues. If the gun was pointed at a light bulb, it would count as a hit. This could be seen as the first video game cheat. Still though, it looks pretty cool compared to today's Wii Zapper. A total of 22 games were made for the Odyssey. 12 were supplied with the console, the others available separately. Sales of the games not supplied with the console were poor, hence why so few were made. Here are the cartridges and ice hockey on the left and table tennis right in action. The Magnum Fox Odyssey sold over 300,000 units. Not bad for a new product that was totally alien to the market at the time. It had many successors like the standalone Odyssey ping pong games and the ill-fated Odyssey 2. It was also copied by many. In 1972, at a Magnavox demonstration in California, a man by the name of Nolan Bushnell signed the guest book and played the Magnavox Odyssey table tennis or ping pong game. He later went on to create Pong and Atari. He was also later sued by Magnavox for patent infringement and settled out of court. The Magnavox Odyssey was the first of many consoles that have made the multi-billion dollar video games industry what it is today.